Hey, this is Dirty Phonics. We have Pitchin, Jillian, myself, Charlie. We're in Paris today and we're gonna be talking about our new song, Scorpion. So uh, for Scorpion, um, we kind of like constructed the track and wrote the track kind of like backwards. Uh, we started working on this one synth that kind of like became the main element throughout the whole song. Um, and it was important for us to take this as the starting point because it kind of like gave the whole personality in terms of uh, texture and, and, you know, general vibe that we wanted throughout the track. So maybe you can explain how we did this synth specifically, and then how it sits in the main song. Yeah, I would say that's the Scorpion bass in a way. That's it what is. inspires us to go to that kind of vibe and stuff. So this is a Serum, Serum VST that we've done. Patch is pretty simple for what I remember. It's uh, basically just a wavetable uh, that goes into effect. So that's a reverb filter. I kind of love that that filter on Serum. It gives kind of a detuned reverb kind of vibe. So let's take a listen to the wavetable without effects. That'll be it. Well, what's actually interesting is that uh, most of the Serum patches that you usually see uh, or that people make, you know, it's always like oscillator A and B and FMing the shit out of it. In this case. Like we found a pretty cool interest, an yeah. interesting texture just with one oscillator. So it's not about like overcomplicating everything, it's just like finding the right settings that makes you happy, I guess. Yeah, it's pretty simple. Like we, we can we can also do like very very difficult ones, I would say like with like all the metrics mode full to the max, you mm -hmm. know, with the 40 slots used. But this one is like, you know, I mean we have the sound, it's good. So basically, that, that was the wavetable. LFO, you know, the dotted eights is modulating basically the wavetable position. And also, I think that's the filter cutoff of the, the reverb filter. So it gives that kind of like low and, and neuro kind of feeling. And basically, it's a uh, it's, uh, distortion. Distortion gives also the, the texture, which is like a sinfo distortion. So it, it's not one of the most destructive ones, but it kind of like gives that a little grit. Yeah, and the thing is like, if you play with the macro, there you go. which is attached to, the, to that distortion, to the sinfo distortion, can uh, give more grit actually. And the thing is like uh, that that same that same movement is also the same LFO. Yeah, the same LFO could be like you know. I mean, usually what we'll do in in most of the case we'll try to attach it may maybe to the reverb and give some more depth. I guess you know or anything, but like I don't know. Maybe we were in a rush, so this <laughs> patch is like. Pretty straightforward, but that's the whole basis of the sound. Most of the times, I don't know if it's a producer stuff, but like we will use our own wave right. tables. Yeah. We will take our old waves and just import them into into Serum. So that th those are like for for example like uh, wave tables that we've done. Yeah, because you can totally like take a take a little away from something like any kind of sound or any kind of track, uh, as a matter of fact, and throw it in Serum, and it'll create uh, a wave table that kind of like has the same uh, texture that the original sound. Yeah, it's like a and starting point. Yeah, it's it's a good starting point. Like usually, I never use it to get that original sound, but the fact that you can like actually transform wave into wave tables is uh, fun, fun stuff because like when you got like kind of a FM modulation and you want to trip on it, you just like import it, trying to make it clean because like most, most difficult thing is actually to get like the wavetables clean, you know, like right. if you get any sound into Serum, like most of the times, like three times on 10, you know, it's gonna be like crappy and you will have to pass it to another sound. 
But like, yeah, those, those are like wave tables, you know, they're all called Neuro. But they're all like, yeah, from sounds of scratch, you know. And that's usually how we do, how we do like the bass, bass sounds. Do you want to talk about like the, the, the other main bass that like kind of works um, yeah, in sure. balance to balance out this, this answer? So let's take a look at the serum patch of that of that first bass sound. So actually, there's no modulation at all this time. It's all based on the on this LFO. At the, the I mean this button. So basically, that's one of the wavetable of serum. It's called Rizimas. Um, it's all a bit detuned with the unison. And what we've done is we've hooked up the macro on the wavetable position. Uh, we've hooked up the macro on a FM, so FM from B, so basically that's... <laughs> Big surprise. Yeah. So basically it adds more grid and more noise, I would say. And uh, I think we use the same distortion as the other one, so that's... Uh, no, that's not a scene fold, that's the linear fold. So it's kind of the same effect, just like crushes the sound in a really noisy way. So, and same thing with the, with the compressor, it's a multi band compressor, all the way up and, you know, just squashing the sound. So basically, uh, what we did is like, we did it by hand. And like the first, first thing is just a ramp. Which, which gave like a kind of like a, uh, a great great sound because it just evolves from that like it just it just evolves like it was like three different sounds so I kind of like the the vibe of it and I would say uh, first time we layered that sound it was on its own there was no lead so we made it like pretty large mm -hmm. and when when I rendered it, when I bounced it to audio, I, I put another treatment, which was like uh, controlling the monos of the subs. So uh, I, get, uh, I just like make mono everything that's below 120 hertz. And I've uh, actually decreased the stereo widths, which was uh, the, the main point was like the... To make the some lead. room. For to other make some more for the elements lead. in the Especially higher frequencies. Especially the lead, like the lead was like super large, yeah. and this bass was super large, and everything was like out on the sides, and there was nothing almost like, you know, standing in the middle. So we made it like much more mm -hmm. mono compatible, and like you know, there, and the lead will be like on the sides, which is like a much more natural way of constructing stuff. Especially when you like mix your big kick snares with a bass and a lead. Yeah. Which is a lot. And I, I just want to go back to something you said earlier. Uh, you said that, you know, basically we assigned a bunch of the parameters to, um, to a MIDI controller. Uh, and it's something that's kind of cool to do because we're all used now to like drawing all the LFO shapes on Serum or whatnot. Um, but having this actual human control where there is margin for error and groove and I don't know, I feel like it, it's cool to like go back and forth between something that you really want super tight on the grid and then having, you know, more, yeah, human feeling elements that you control with your hands. Exactly. And it's like a one shot that you, you know, you can't really reproduce after that, but that's also what makes uh, a song or a specific sound being unique. Yeah, and in terms of uh, treatments, like those two sounds that we just explained, they are both uh, like, the treatment of it, you know, will be like, I'll get all the bass under 120 hertz out of mm -hmm. it. Uh, this EQ, particular EQ, was also to make the, the, the lead stand out because like, especially like, in a way, it was just like to make things stand out, especially for the lead. And, and it's always better to remove some frequencies and some elements to leave room for others, then try and like add up and push, push everything it, to yeah. the map to the max, because then it's gonna be like, get all yeah, I mean, all distorted and, and we, we also and boost stuff, but like you know, there's always this point where like you're gonna boost stuff and yeah, sound you can't boost everything, yeah. 
So, so if you can like just have the same result, just like getting those frequency out, it's way better. So right. basically, that's it. Um, that's how, like, I mean, all all of that is um, is uh, side chain, mm -hmm. and and basically that's that's how like we design our bass. Like basically, it's gonna be like one sub on the side, and I would say middle or high high energy field basses that we just cut under 120. So the sub sits uh, on his own, yep. and and the, the the rest is just like the serum patch. Yeah, yeah. In this case. So right now we're gonna try to focus on the beat section. So let's play the entire drop. Okay, solo the the beat section. Yeah, I'll solo it on this again. So yeah, uh, pretty straightforward drum and bass beat. Uh, we're not gonna talk about like the kick and snare because there was a lot of tutorial on that and basically we've been sampling ourselves and like trying to like adjust and get better at it at every single tracks. Yeah. What's more specific to us is like the way we make uh, hi-hats and toms. For the hi-hats, like everybody, we used to use like a lot of samples and stuff like that. And uh, to make something a little bit more personal, now we make our hi-hats with serum. And, and also easy drummer. And also so. easy drummer to have this kind of like real drum, rock and roll feeling. So we're trying to combine those two together to have something a little bit unique and trying to find a good balance between live drum element and a like more electronic digital um, hi-hats like rhythm. So let's see the let's serum Let's see the other one, now. yeah. This is the patch of the serum hi-hat. So um, it's basically a noise that we that we like uh, frequency modulate uh, in a very high manner. Like we can hear here the really metallic metallic sound. We, we we use it especially for those like kind of like curves that we can modulate, and that's the whole purpose of using serum as a hi hat because obviously it's not as good as like a uh, hi-hat sample or anything. But layering them with those like... Uh, the easy with the easy drummer makes, makes like a, the mechanical way uh, really stand out. And the, the, the really practical thing is like when you have like this kind of like hi-hat going on. So that's the, just the, the easy drummer. When I put the, the serum hi-hats, I can really modulate. How like the TK really reacts yeah, to make them fit to the music. together and combine very nicely. Yeah, so like um, it's like two similar envelopes. The second one is the most important because it controls uh, mostly uh, the FM. It's modulating on the volume of, of course, of the oscillator, which is gives uh, the noise, the noise, uh, really the noise sound. So the hi hat sound. It's modulating also on the EQ, so we give it a boost each time like there's a hit, you know, just gives a boost to the EQ as you see here. And really like the fact that it's synthetic, you know, allows us to really like, you know, uh, give it more like, more like a medium character if I want, like this, you know. And that's the whole point, really, of, of using it. It's like really in in this preset, I can like modulate from really uh, dark, you know, long hi hats to really sh shiny small ones, short ones, you know, that you could use in yeah, almost you can tune in, in it trap, whatever you, know. you want, and as you want. You did, there is no limitation. And and that's all just like modulates on the on the envelopes, you know, to to give just that kind of like, you know, whether short or long decay. I think that's it pretty much for the, for the I will say, overheads. Um, toms? Yeah, let's, let's talk about the toms. toms. Yeah. I played the old riff. That was the first break and second break. Play solo too? So, 
those toms here, there you go. they are made with serum. You know, I know a lot of people are gonna say we use a lot of serum, but like <laughs> this, the, we found no other better way to, to make toms that kind of sound rock and roll. And, and the clever thing about it is like you can tune anything, you get every note. So, uh, so let's, make, let's try to make one which is going to be interesting. And I'm probably not going to, you know, remake that sound, but I'll show how. Yeah, and it doesn't matter if it's the exact same one. Yeah, but actually. Um, so let's take a sign. I'll just take you on a sign on a, on a sub oscillator. Let's take a noise. I'll grab the bright white, which is going to be fair enough. Uh, let's uh, now modulate the pitch of the two of them because we want like a fast envelope to give that like tom attack. With LFO one. Uh, yep. So that's gonna be super simple. Yeah, I'm gonna go in matrix. I've done it on the oscillator one, but now it is. Get rid of the oscillator so one. Happened? So basically, I've triggered. Uh, the envelope and it's triggering uh, the pitch of the sub and the noise. Basically, of the all. So that's the, the hit. Uh, we're gonna... Yeah, give it a more. So let's get on with that. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a low pass and a high pass filter. So let's take that. First thing is like when you emulate toms, uh, you want a nice attack. So um, what I'm gonna do is like I'm just gonna filter, you know, low pass uh, the noise and the sign, and I'm just gonna high pass it just a little bit. That's a little bit too much. <laughs> Bring some drive. Yeah, and um, I think there's a compressor on it. Okay, and, and a reverb. So basically, uh, basically that's how that's how it's made. Now now it just sounds like a crappy kind of eight or eight tone. But uh, the whole thing about it is like uh, I'm gonna bring an EQ and trying to make it more uh, resonant in a way, and that's how that's how we try to emulate the the tom sound. It's mostly it's not even like the just fine tuning of the of the pitch envelope. It's gonna be more about like knowing about the EQs and boostings and removing certain frequency. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring the LFO to, to, the, to the gain of the, the first EQ. So what I'm looking for is like that tom sound. So I want a resonant sound. Um, another thing that I've not done yet is just the volume. See if, if I'm right now it's not a time at all, but like I'm just gonna do the envelopes now using another envelope. So the first yeah. thing I'm gonna do another LFO, but it's it's envelopes yeah, actually. Yeah. You know I'm putting them in envelope mode. That's that's the whole thing. Um, first thing is like the really sub parts. I'm gonna make it slightly a little bit delayed. So when it kicks and when it, when 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 the tom is hitted, like the first thing you hear uh, is gonna be the attack. So there's not really much sub sound in a natural way. So what I'm doing is like I'm dealing in it with the volume, and uh, that's. And I'm gonna do the same stuff with the noise, except the noise kicks in right away. 
So that's already much more, a little bit better. And now let's go back to the EQ. So what I'm gonna do is now I got like much more of the, I would say uh, low med, low medium. So what I'm gonna do is like, I'm gonna boost uh, the attack again, you know, by adding some kind of like, I would say uh, 4K Hertz. And that's basically how we do the tones. So this one is really bad compared, I would say, to the original one, but then it's just like trial and error yeah. and like not, like not twisting, you know, and, and, and like, more noise and stuff yeah, like that. exactly. I mean, the concept is there after you can tune it uh, and, as I mean, as you want. And uh, yeah, like uh, we've been sticking with those terms uh, since we've uh, designed the, the 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 serum patch because uh, it sounds in for our music it sounds better than most of the terms we can use as a sample and it's much more convenient for that you know for the tuning um, stuff that I was talking about like you know any any track I can just like find the right notes and that's what's interesting about the yeah, serum it, tones it patch. Too. It's not just not a sample. Exactly. <laughs> Hey guys, this is it for now, but make sure to come back for part two because we're going to be talking about a lot more things.